Good morning, everyone. It is what can only be described as a glorious morning out here on the Yorkshire coast. You may not instantly know where we are from this view. If you watch the channel, I don't tend to come out this way an awful lot, but this is Robin Hood's Bay. And so usually we are over on that bit of headland over at Ravenscar. Uh, and as it comes down, there's the second headland that goes around, that's Blue Wyke. Uh, but this little town in front of me, this picturesque little village is uh, yeah, Robin Hood's Bay. So what we're gonna do is go down the rocky foreshore to the north side, uh, down this little path. Uh, we'll go past a couple of little boats. Uh, and then the hope is we'll walk towards what would be Horsker. Uh, I'm not gonna go that far. I'm gonna do something a bit different today. Uh, I'm gonna try and focus on the middle Elias. Uh, so Robin Hood's Bay is an unusual bit of geology. It's got a, uh, a sort of a dome of salt that formed uh, a long time ago, uh, and it caused an uplifting of uh, much older rocks uh, the lower and middle lias to come up and they pop up in between two sections of upper lias the bit over at Horsker and the bit at Ravenscar so we've got north and south of here are younger and then in the middle we've got this much older section uh, and I don't tend to hunt in it very often uh, mostly when I am down here I am scrambling either to or from Horsker uh, to try and get to those uh, lovely upper lias sections where you can get lots of goodies and I know there's been quite a few bits of marine reptile bone have come out recently um, but it's a long walk, a lot of hustling, and I'm enjoying my day because when it is like this, how could you not? So the goal is just to spend some time in the middle layer, see if we can find some more uh, lovely ammonites. Uh, I, when I was down here last time, got the stupid sized Amorosaurus, um, but I know you can also get some nice Androgynoceros and uh, uh, other sort of associated middle layer things. Um, the Pleuros, the Amalthus, which I really love, but those are going to be a lot rarer uh, and further around. But we'll see what we can do. Uh, first things first, we've got to get down uh, and pass some cutoffs, which look like they are still a little wet. Um, so we might have a few minutes just to wait on the beach, uh, just as the tide continues to go out. This is one of the few places uh, on the coast that the initial get down uh, is very difficult because of these cutoffs. There's one that you can just see just down here. Uh, and there's another one just around the corner. Uh, but once you're clear of those, uh, you can get around. Uh, and you can see probably some people already doing the walk that I am going to go do as well. Um, so I suspect they are also fellow fossil hunters out on the day out. Anyway, that's enough of me yapping on. Uh, I'll get down to the beach and uh, get fossil in. I'll be back with you as we start finding things. Yeah, just having a look under the uh, sea defences still uh, before heading around to uh, that cut off to try and see if what we can do. Um, but this is quite a common looking rock for uh, the middle Elias. They get these big orange uh, ironstone nodules that have these septarian calcite veins through them. I've seen a few places in the States they call these lightning stones and you can kind of get the feeling of why because it looks a bit like there's lightning through them. Uh, but what we have to keep an eye out for are things like that. So hopefully when it focuses, there you go. You can see there's a nice little ammonite uh, imprint there. Uh, some of these are not well preserved. Uh, that one, I will not be taking home. You can see the outermost whirl. Uh, it's completely gone. Uh, they also have quite variable preservation. And so there's no guarantees, even if you see an ammonite like this, that it would be easy to get out, even with fancy prep tools. So we'll just have to be a bit careful. Uh, we probably will end up with a few that uh, are unpreppable in the bag by the end of the day, but that is part of learning as we go. Another one of those little ammonites is probably an Androgynoceros, uh, an Androg, um, eroding out just there. Uh, but pretty poor uh, in these lovely big septaria. It may not look like much, but that's a very worn edge of an ammonite keel. Um, I do not know, again, the species, probably something like an Androg at that size. You do get much smaller pyrite ammonites in the bedrock around here, Polymorphites, uh, I believe they're called. Uh, Poly meaning many, morph meaning shape. So they, uh, they come in many shapes, uh, but they're all pretty small. Uh, but I do not have any of them in my collection because to get them out, you have to dig in the bedrock. Bedrock called triple SI protected, so you should not be doing it. Uh, but as I say, I know it happens far too much uh, within the community and we see lots of posts of big ammonites coming out of particularly the boggle hole sections that can only have come out of the bedrock. So it clearly happens. Uh, even though the sites are all triple SI protected under law. Um, 
with big fines and theoretically jail, but I have never heard of anyone being uh, prosecuted in the, the Yorkshire area for triple SI violations, uh, for better or worse. But just to let you all know, what you do with that information is up to you. Uh, the north side of Robin Hood's Bay produces some of the uh, most spectacular shelly blocks uh, along the Yorkshire coast. You get that one there, another one next to it, just rammed through with beautiful bivalves. Uh, and they are stunning, stunning uh, fossils all the way through these big blocks. Uh, would love to have one as a table or similar, but you would never, ever, ever get any of these <laughs> off the beach, even if you wanted to. You'd need a helicopter. Uh, just to remind you, if you didn't know, uh, just because the weather is nice does not mean the cliffs are safer to be under. Uh, I've already heard a few little uh, rock falls happening, uh, and I'm sure I will hear several more. So, uh, yeah, just be careful of it. Uh, we're out of winter proper um, and into, at least for now, some nicer weather. Um, but uh, that does just make the cliffs crumbly in different ways. Uh, so just be mindful of that. And if you are on the beach, keep your distance from the cliffs for your own safety. That's a bit of a bigger shell just to show it off for you. Uh, they do get even bigger than that, especially as you head into the big bay near Horsker. Um, but I don't know, as I said, if we'll get that far. Uh, and here you can see quite a diversity. We've got a bit of plant down here. And we've got loads of belemnites in this section, even more down here. It's uh, quite impressive when you see just how much there is. These are devil's toenails or gryphea. Lots and lots of bits all within the bedrock here. That's when you know the weather is nice. People are paddle boarding or paddle surfing, I guess is probably a better term for uh, what these two are doing. Uh, but yeah, it's still only March, uh, but this, this nice out, um, spring has definitely sprung. This is a beautiful block. Uh, there's these weird tube shells, I don't know what they're called, uh, inside here. We've got some beautiful bivalves with their spines on them. Uh, as you come further along, you'll see the negatives of a bunch of ammonites. There's one there, another one there, uh, another one just above it, the one there that caught my eye initially. Uh, and a couple more down on this corner here. A uh, beautiful block, beautiful, beautiful block. Uh, but yeah, to give you an idea of scale of this thing, that is my foot. So yeah, not movable in the least. Whoever has left that who has done me a favor. That's uh, a beautiful live house just sticking out. We'll do a bit more uh, varied fossiling as well. So these are trace fossils or burrows, ichno fossils as they're called. I-C-H-N-O. Uh, they fall into the same categories, things like footprints, uh, as far as groupings. They're not real body fossils, things that are the remains of the actual animal, uh, but they are the remains uh, of what the animal did whilst it was living. This is one of those much, much bigger shells. Uh, to give you an idea, it's roughly hand-sized. Uh, these are the blocks that you start to find as you get further around towards the pleuro beds. Uh, so it might just give you an idea that I am Going around, I wouldn't say at a relatively fast pace, but there has not been an awful lot to film. Lots of small bits and pieces, but uh, uh, nothing, nothing collected so far. Yeah, some lovely fossil oysters on this one. They're keeping their shell and their shape. Beautiful little bed of them. Just to prove I am still looking, yeah, not always obvious, that there is another little imprint of an ammonite. Sadly, just an imprint. Well, what is fun is I honestly couldn't tell you the last time uh, we came through if this had all fallen or if this is fresh, but it looked relatively fresh looking at the state of the cliff up there. And uh, yeah, obviously quite a lot has come down. So uh, yeah, there is still stuff coming down in certain places. I don't tend to split many nodules here because uh, it's usually septarian and so rubbish. Um, but obviously someone has done pretty well out of that. Looks like it might be a pleuroceros. But yeah, so they do exist, they do exist in the nodules, uh, but your success uh, and the amount of time you'll spend doing it will vary. Yeah, so we're now in what would be normally the, the last easy bay to get to, you can tell with the shipwreck, uh, that's where we're at. Um, I have got absolutely nothing in my bag, so I am contemplating going around the headland there uh, and towards uh, the big bay at Horsker to at least try and get some ammonites to show off to all of you so you're not just sat looking at 
<laughs> a video of lots of bivalves and pieces of ammonites. Because uh, I know, well, some of you will enjoy it and enjoy the general chit chat and stratigraphy and fossil ID. Uh, I know a lot of you much prefer seeing exciting finds. Uh, and so that might have to be what we do. Uh, this is the section that is supremely dangerous if you don't know uh, your tides. So please, if you are thinking about coming around to the Big Bad Horse Care, make sure that you know what your tides are. I've still got an hour and a half before now, so I've got plenty of time. Um, if the waves are up, the wind is blowing on shore, or it looks like the tide might be coming in already, do not come through here because you will get cut off. There are plenty of evidence that some people have done very well out of here. That's a massive bit of uh, pleuro keel, at least a negative in one of these shelly blocks. So, yeah, getting close to uh, the next little bay, which is always worth an explore. And this is a sign we're creeping back into the upper lias. That's a grey shells nodule, a bunch of tennies that got split by the looks of it. Uh, someone's probably taken the one that had this couple in it, but left it with that one. Uh, it's not worth me taking, but uh, yeah. A nice block. I have a suspicion this is, or at least was, a massive Amorocerus. Um, so you can see shell here and here, and then this little curl, if we can get in on it, is the inner part of it. Uh, and you can see with my foot how big it is. Uh, yeah, sadly, that's all there is of it. Otherwise, I would very much consider trying to see if I could break this nodule down uh, and get it out. But uh, yeah, it's long gone. Another DAC in the gray shale stuff. Uh, they're very far gone, however, so that one will be staying there as well. Yeah, this is the big bay. As you can see, the tide's a long way out, uh, but it doesn't mean it won't come back in in a hurry in about an hour's time. Uh, so I won't spend too long here, uh, but I do like to point out safety hazards. You can see just how big these cliffs are. There's a guy there. Wow. Well, there. Yeah, somewhere around there, fossil hunting that hopefully you can see. Um, but if you look at the cliffs, there's this shelf. Uh, and rocks come down and hit that and bounce a lot further out than you'd expect. From experience, having been hit by one that's come off the top of that, not fun. Uh, and I only got taken by a small one, which is why I wear my hard hat all the time. Uh, but if you do come into this general direction, uh, be very careful, especially through summer. A lot of these uh, cliffs are very shaly and these ones do crumble an awful lot through summer as the sun hits them and the wind blows on them. They dry out, they crack, they fall. So just be careful. Yeah, not had much luck with the red shelly blocks. There was a pleuro in that. Uh, you might hear rock falling in the background behind me. Uh, I think that might be a little Amorocerus there, but I'm not convinced that's worth even taking. Uh, but I've got nothing in my bag, so it might go back. Just to find out if it is an ammonite or if that's a bivalve. I can't quite tell from that. Uh, but yeah, big blocks, not a lot in them. A nice little deck, uh, very squished, uh, but the pyrite makes it quite nice looking. Uh, that'll stay there though. I just hit a little spot of a few upper lias ammonites, so we've got a section of a deck there, a bit more of deck there, uh, and then I saw a section here of this one and tapped it, and it's a lovely little pseudo lyocerus. Uh, that'll just go in the pocket, because I do like a good little pocket fossil. And just to prove a point that I haven't gone very far, there's my pseudo negative, and there's a pre-split deck. That's actually quite a nice little one for a pre-split. I'll take it. Yeah, I definitely won't be writing many stories home about the finds so far. Uh, there's one little ammonite right there. And that's it. Oh, and as you hear... Yeah. And that's what I mean about the, uh, the falls through summertime, even though we're not summer yet. It is a constant shower of shale and little rocks with the occasional big rock thrown in for good measure. So uh, yeah, just be careful and keep your distance from the cliffs. All right, uh, breaking down this uh, classic shelly block, uh, they're always worth having a look at from this location. You get the pleuros in them, so that's a pleuro edge there. Uh, that's sadly going off the top there, so not there. We'll keep breaking this one down. Um, but as we were doing it, it split nicely uh, to reveal an Amoroceros. It's sadly very squished and broken as is standard for these flat ammonites, um, but it just shows they're also in the same blocks. Um, but whilst I was doing that, uh, a fan of the channel who's out collecting, uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Nirvana Mad Paul, uh, had a quick chit chat, uh, got a photo, always nice to see. Um, 
whilst he stopped I was looking down and yeah that there is a keel and if you look at the other side you can see the shell on the other side so that there is a pleuro and that's quite a nice one hopefully obviously a bit battered and worn on this side but we might be able to reverse prep it and uh, yeah quite pleased with that I got distracted uh, and looking down yeah a deck a nice tinny uh, but what I am excited by I've just made my trip uh, I've always been looking for a good pleuro block uh, and so this one that I've been breaking down turns out to be that good one uh, or at least hopefully so there's one there there's one up here and the exciting one hopefully is the big one here uh, and so hopefully that is all there uh, I think it's a pleuro although it's got a bit of a wiggly pie crust uh, top um, but I don't think it's some Altheus stuff I think it's all pleuro um, and there may well be a lot more in this block as this block is, seems to be quite a happy block uh, and I'm very, very pleased with it. Uh, it's become an Amorosaurus sort of day. Uh, having never seen one myself uh, until the last trip I was down here, I've now got another one that I've just exploded. Uh, bloody everywhere, these little things. So we're pretty much at low tide now. Uh, so I'm gonna start working my way back. Uh, yeah, the big bay, not much for the upper layers. Can't say I walked an awful long way. I've been playing in the Pluro stuff. Uh, and that one plural block might well just made the trip. Uh, let's see if we can find some more stuff as we get back. One of the other things I know you can find here uh, is starfish. Uh, there's a little bed somewhere, uh, I don't know exactly where, um, but this is what this is. This is a leg here. There's a part of a leg there, there's part of a leg there. Uh, I would have said it was probably centered here. Uh, yeah, it's not worth collecting, but it's the first one I've ever seen on the coast. Uh, shame. Yeah, it's a beautiful Amalthius negative. I actually know who dug this out uh, at the time. Uh, but yeah, it's just a good reminder that they are here and they are they can get very big. Uh, I'm still hunting one. Anything near that size and that be uh, beauty. And another pleuro block. Uh, sadly, the, the big one, uh, not all there or broke when it split. That's another one there that we at least get a middle out of. Uh, yeah, spotted it because of the biggest one that was on the side. Um, but yeah, again, middle might be there. Uh, we might see what we can do if we can prep down from this side or come from the other side and lose the outer worlds. Uh, coming back up the boat ramp now. Uh, been a fairly long old trek actually today. Uh, not, not super productive, but we didn't expect it to be. It's a joy in the middle of uh, especially here and especially after the nice weather, it's uh, always gonna be a bit hit and miss. Uh, but. Yeah, a few nice plural blocks and that should be uh, quite exciting. Can't believe how many Amorosaurus I saw today as well either. Uh, but yeah, it's a lovely day. Let me just show you. This is what Robinhood's Bay currently still looks like. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, absolutely beautiful. We are spoilt by our coastline and uh, the weather as well. Um, not sure when I'll be next out. Not even sure where I'm going to go to next. Uh, that will be the next uh, thing to figure out but uh, I've got some fossils coming back from prep uh, which hopefully should be in the next video and uh, I've got some plans for showing off geology uh, and the stratigraphy of Robin Hood's Bay but I haven't yet figured out exactly how to do that there might be some pancakes involved because uh, you know that's that's the best way to show off layers of rock but uh, yeah thanks as, as always for watching uh, hope you have enjoyed it uh, let us know what you'd like to see next uh, and if you think pancakes as stratigraphy is a great idea, <laughs> do let us know. Uh, catch you all in the next one.